Ruth George. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And as someone who's worked for the Shop Workers Union on behalf of low-paid yeah. shop workers for nearly 20 years, I have been banging on about universal credit for many a year now, and it's a pleasure to see so many members across both sides of the House taking such an interest in this policy that will affect not just the 7 million households who will become claimants, an average of 10,800 households in each constituency, so we're not surprised at that. But the two and a half million households who are currently on legacy benefits and will cease to receive anything because of the cuts to universal credit. I welcome the fact that there have been constructive comments made on both sides of the House about universal credit, and I have always tried to be constructive when I am addressing this policy. I've set up the uh, all-party group on universal credit and I'm pleased to see contributions from all sides of the House at that group. And I also sit on the Select Committee for Work and Pensions where we will be pleased to receive this report. But if this Government is open about scrutiny and about really wanting to learn and fix universal credit, then why are they not publishing an impact assessment on it? Mm. It's not just about these reports. We last had an impact assessment on universal credit five years ago, almost to the day. Since then, we've seen almost £5 billion a year cut <coughs> from that policy. Actually, the last uh, impact assessment for universal credit said that a comprehensive evaluation programme is being developed. This evaluation will need to meet the immediate need for feedback and evidence on implementation issues. Apparently, it would include ongoing monitoring, evaluation and analysis, a live running review of implementation and delivery of universal credit, a fuller evaluation of implementation and delivery, and ongoing analysis of outcomes and impacts. Now, what I would like to ask the Minister to address in his response at the end of this debate is where are those assessments of the policy of universal yeah, credit yeah. that the impact assessment of December 2012 said were being put in place? Mm -hmm. Have they actually been produced? If not, why not? But if they have, when they were committed to being produced, then why have they not been published? Why have we waited five years mm. and five billion pounds of cuts mm. and still not seen any evidence from the party opposite on how universal credit is affecting the hundreds of thousands of people who are on it now and the millions who will be affected in yeah. future? At the very least, there should have been an impact assessment to assess the impact of those cuts from the July 2015 budget. But <clears throat> even though that budget cut £3.2 billion from work allowances, nearly £1.5 billion with the two-child policy, we're left to IFS to tell us that actually 3 million working households with children will be £2,500 a year worse off. That work incentives for single parents and for couples who both work are actually weakened under universal credit now that the work allowances have been cut. And unlike under tax credits, under universal credit, claimants work overtime, their next month's universal credit payment is docked by nearly si by 63% of whatever they have earned. Where is the work incentive in that? If a parent earns another £100 in the run-up to Christmas to try and pay for some uh, Christmas presents for their family and give them a decent uh, holiday, they will see their next universal credit payment cut by £63. Ah. That is not a work incentive. Now listen to you, Liz. Member, um, is speaking very well on this debate, and I'm glad that she's raising the issues that she is. Is she aware that um, for some families who are um, now a uh, full victim of the, th of the, three of the family cap, um, in universal credit, it doesn't actually pay them to go out to work. If they have a third child, then actually work will pay them less um, than the nursery fees required. Absolutely, and childcare is a key issue when families are trying to raise themselves out of poverty, as, as the Honourable Lady rightly says. 
and the Joseph Rowntree Foundation have found that 30% of children now are in poverty. Nearly two-thirds of them are in working households. Eight million adults live in poverty in a household where someone is in work. Universal credit was meant to address the problems of poverty. It was meant to address work incentives. It isn't. This government are refusing to publish the evidence to fix their own policy. They're claiming that that's what they want to do. If they really do want to fix universal credit before it's rolled out to another six million families, mm. then they need to publish not just these reports, but a full impact assessment and lay their policy and their government open to the scrutiny that this House and the public deserve. Yeah. 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 Yeah.